الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا ليجزي الله الصادقين بصدقهم ويعذب المنافقين إن شاء أو يتوب عليهم إن الله كان غفورا رحيما صدق الله العظيم Continuing with our same series of ancestors We talked about Eight Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een Out of al-Ashratul Mubashara And today inshallah We'll talk about the ninth Of those Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een out of the ten who got the glad tiding of Jannah from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this life. And today inshallah we will be talking about a Sahabi who is a perfect example, a model for those of course for everyone in the ummah but especially for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have blessed with wealth and those who are deceived by the deceiver those who are eating the poison and not realizing what it is those who have been lost within things that are made by human beings those who instead is serving things that were supposed to serve them those who put their times and we should use the word waste their time after things that will not be of any help to them at the time of difficulty. Is a Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed with a lot of wealth. At the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with some more qualities that sometimes are difficult for a human being, for a man to have all of these qualities at once in him especially there are certain qualities that do not get along with this wealth and getting those qualities with this wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses some people with it's a thing that will make the person a human being and the type of human being that only can be if he would go back to the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would develop the qualities and would use the wealth and would earn the wealth in a way that only a messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can guide to it and can give the proper instructions towards it. Imagine a sahabi who says I have so much wealth that I'm afraid to touch any stone, any rock on my way when I'm walking on the streets with the fear that some valuable thing will come from underneath it. He's saying, Ya Allah, enough. And Allah says, take more. 
He has been blessed, blessed so much that he used to keep huge bricks of gold at his home and imagine when he says and people around him are reading it that when they needed some gold he will call someone with an axe some worker with an axe to break the gold and won't even worry about the pieces that are breaking apart with all of this and with so much that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to select 10 people out of 124,000 10 people out of 124,000 of Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een to be given the glad tiding of Jannah he was chosen to be one of those great Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een one of those 10 people with all of the wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with with that there were some qualities that he had that got him to that level the first thing a thing that normally is far away from the wealth and as soon as the more we get the more we get away from that quality and that is braveness The more the person has, the more covid the person keeps on getting. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he once looked at some children, he said how nice they are. But once we have them, then we start getting covered. Because now the person doesn't want to do anything that will hurt him, hurt, hurt his children. I don't want to, uh, I want to save my children. I want to help my children. I want to be around my children. Will not do anything that will in any way hurt our children financially, physically, or in any other way. One more quality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the Sahabi with was the right understanding of things. He is a type of Sahabi, subhanAllah, that we find him from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, then Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, then Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, and then Usman bin Affan radiallahu anhu. All of these people, when they were ruling the Muslim ummah, he was the right hand man for those people and every time when they need any important to, to, to make an important decision in their lives and about the Khilafah and about any judgment in the world, they would consult this man. Even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to call him especially to take his opinion about important matters. And that is Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu was in his 30s when he became Muslim. He was 10 years younger than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always trusted his opinion so much that whenever he wanted to make an important decision about something, he would say, call Abdul Rahman bin Awf, let me ask him. Let me see what he says about it. It did not end at that point. As I said, even Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu would call Abdul Rahman bin Awf to the extent that when Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was on his deathbed and he wanted to assign the Khalifa, the only person he called, the first person that he called to call to, to uh, consult about who should be the Khalifa after him was Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu. Not only that, here comes the time of Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. And we find Umar radiallahu anhu, whenever he wants to spend the night going around in the streets of Medina Munawwara, 
to get the news of the people that's ar that are around him. Make sure that everyone is living in peace. No one is having a difficulty. First thing he would do, he would go and knock at the door of Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu. Abdul Rahman, can you come with me for tonight? And then both of them together would spend the night out there looking and taking care of people's needs. This is the same Abdul Rahman bin Awf who says that I found something in the life of Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu that I have not seen anywhere else. During the days of Khilafah, he says, I was trusted by these people and I know their secrets. Both of these Khulafa al Rashidin, both of these Sahaba, at the time of Tahajjud, as they used to wake up for Salat al Tahajjud, before they would start Salat al Tahajjud, the first thing they used to do was go out to the houses of the widows and take whatever they need and put it at their homes. They don't even know who came and put it at their doors. They wake up in the morning and find food at their doors, money at their door. They would go to the houses and the places where they know that there are some handicaps over there. Nighttime, it's darkness. They don't even know who's there. And these people will go and clean the house for them, wash their dresses for them, wash the clothes for them, and then go back. And now they're performing Salat al Tahajjud. Fajr time, they are in the masjid, and no one knows what these Khulafa al Rashidin have done during the night time. But the person who knew this, the secret was Abdul Rahman bin Awf. <coughs> After the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, as we said, he was a Sahabi whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed with a lot of wealth. And he himself says, I'm, I'm afraid to touch anything because there will be more coming from underneath it. When he used to look at the food, his wife says most of the time he would just sit and cry. Why is he crying? You have everything that you need, Abdul Rahman. We have prepared some nice food for you today. This is why he's crying. He would say that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam departed from this life, from this world, and he did not have enough to fill his stomach. Not a single day that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam would eat to his full. And here we have that every day and a couple of times a day we, have, we are having all of these meals. He would look at that food and would start crying. Look at these qualities that he's blessed with, with all of that wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with. After the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day people heard a lot of noise. What is this? They said this is a large, a huge trade caravan that came from Syria to Medina Munawwara. It belongs to Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu. Aisha radiallahu anha, when she knew what was going on, she asked, all of that noise was from that, just from that one business caravan that came from Abdul Rahman bin Awf. They said, yes, there are about 700 camels loaded with food so she said, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Abdul Rahman is guaranteed the Jannah, but he will be crawling to get into Jannah. He won't be able to walk. He will be crawling to get into Jannah. Someone went to Abdul Rahman and said, this is what Umm al muminin our mother is saying. He went and knocked at her door. Ma'am, you really remind me of something that I heard it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam myself. It's nothing new for him. He heard it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When did he hear it? He himself narrates. One day he was sitting with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abdul Rahman, although you are guaranteed the Jannah, but you will be scrolling to get into the Jannah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, is it because of my wealth? He said, yes. 
because there is nothing wrong you are doing with it but there will be some judgment it will take some time for you to be judged for all of what you have earned you have to answer those questions Abdul Rahman before getting into Jannah he said Ya Rasulullah I don't want to scroll into Jannah I don't want to be left behind Ya Rasulullah then Ya Rasulullah if this is the case allow me to give everything out for the, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that I can be like all the other people uh, 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 of, uh, of, uh, of Al-Ashrat al-Mubashara. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sure, Abdul Rahman, go ahead and do it. As he left, he took a couple of steps. Subhanallah, Allah is testing their iman. Who out of us would be willing to do that? Guaranteed the Jannah. It's only going a little slower than the other people. He says, I can't even take that. Ya Rasulullah, allow me to give everything away. And he walks out of the masjid. He goes towards his home. Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam came down. He said, Ya Rasulullah, if you would ask him to do it, then every person in the ummah will have to do that. Stop him from doing it. Tell him not to do that. Then what should I tell him? Tell him to keep on taking care of the needy people, whoever he knows, and as many people as he can help. Tell him just to take care of those people. Keep on paying the zakat and sadaqat and helping you as long as you are alive. Helping your family after you, you depart. That will inshallah suffice on behalf of Abdul Rahman bin Awf. He called him back. He narrated that message to him. Jibreel alayhi salam especially came to narrate this message for Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated the message to Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I thank you for telling me this. And I know that you are trying to do it so that you can save me from giving up everything. But as a thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who sent this message especially for me, who sent Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam for me, I, as a thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least I would give half of my wealth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. <laughs> These are the qualities. It's not easy to get that. To be out of 10 out of 100, and to be selected to be one of those 10 out of 124,000. These are the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed these Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een with. He is one of the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. And out of very few that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself with his own blessed hands tied the imam on his head to show the other sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een how much he loves abdul rahman bin awf in those days for rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to give someone a special degree he used to tie the imam on that person's head and this was abdul rahman bin awf radiyallahu anhu was one of those very few sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een who got this degree from and the certificate from rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and very amazing. One of the only two Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een who led Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was always the Imam. There are only two Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een who happened to be leading and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performing the salah behind them. One, I'm sure we all know, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu, and the second is Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiyallahu anhu. That was during the battle of Tabuk. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a little late in coming back from some of the needs that he went for, and it was getting late for the time of Salah, and the time was almost running out, Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een decided that we should start the jama'ah before the time runs out. Now who would lead? And they all selected Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiyallahu anhu to be the imam. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back, one rak'ah was over and he met the other rak'ah behind Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiyallahu anhu. After salah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, said, and he made the statement, that every prophet of Allah is made to perform salah behind some virtuous people of his ummah. And this happened to be Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu for me. 
So he's getting another degree of a rajulus salih, a virtuous person of the ummah who leaves the Prophet of Allah during his lifetime. So the Prophet knows that there are people in my ummah who are there to carry out the responsibilities of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who are there to carry out this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the Prophet of Allah would depart. So every Prophet performed the prayer behind a follower of his and he says, and one of the virtuous followers, this is the word he used, a rajul salih, a virtuous person out of his ummah. And he said, today, this is Abdurrahman bin Awf for me. I have performed the salah behind him. And Allah is showing me that it's my time to leave and it's time for ummah to take the responsibility. And he's a virtuous man of my ummah. Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu at the time of his death. First thing he assigned Abdurrahman bin Awf to be the Khalifa. Abdurrahman bin Awf said, I won't accept it. And that was the time when he assigned a shura of six people. And Abdur Sayyid Umar radiyallahu anhu said to those six people, if you are three and three, and you don't know what decision to make, then the final decision would be of Abdurrahman bin Awf radiyallahu anhu. This is how much he was trusted. And with this, I would just like to remind ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed some people. In spite of everything else they have, he blessed those people, some people in the ummah, with some good understanding, decision-making ability. This is an ability. This is not only a knowledge that we get from books. These are some abilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses some people with. And we have, if we have people around us like those, we should always consult those people. We should have just like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is consulting. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is consulting. Umar radiallahu anhu is consulting. Subhanallah. So we should have this habit of having a shura, asking each other, asking people's opinion, and especially look for those people. And we should always have people around us, alhamdulillah, of the type, who have abilities of having, making the right decisions and things. Let's at least ask those opinions. This is something that we learn from the life of Abdurrahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu, who was always invited to be asked about his opinion. And he never, after giving the opinion, we find that even when his opinion was not accepted, he would never go back and complain that they only asked me for an opinion, never follow it. Many times, the opinion was not accepted. And then, as a result, they saw bad results also because of not accepting the opinion. But still, Abdurrahman bin Awf radiallahu anhu would say, the Amir's decision is final, my opinion means nothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to follow the path of these Sahaba radwanullahi alayhi majma'een and learn our lessons from these great Sahaba radwanullahi alayhi majma'een. There is a lot to learn from them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore requires us to follow their lifestyle. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين.